Welcome back to Ant on the Move. With this podcast today, we're going to talk about the record that the Orlando International Airport set this past week. So if you're planning on a visit to Central Florida, if you're planning to visit Disney World, Universal Studios, SeaWorld Orlando, any of the main theme parks here in Central Florida, most likely you will fly into Orlando International Airport. Uh, For your information, when you're trying to look up Orlando International Airport, you will not find it under OIA, as you would expect. That's not its airport code. It's actually MCO, which we will talk about in a future episode, because um, there's a really interesting story behind why it actually is called MCO instead of OIA. But this past week, in spring break, SeaWorld Orlando broke a record. Now, it's a slightly confusing record because it's talking about specifically departing passengers, not total passengers, not incoming and outgoing, but simply departing passengers. So MCO's 10 busiest days for departing passengers, we can go back to number 10 in, which was uh, the 10th record, what? Yeah, the tenth l- number on the record was set actually this year also, um, February twenty seventh, twenty twenty three. There was eighty five thousand two hundred and thirteen departing passengers. Actually, if we look at this list, all but two dates of busiest departing passenger dates are in twenty twenty three. Uh, number seven was eleven twelve twenty twenty two with eighty six thousand plus departing passengers and then the next highest it's not in 2023 is number three at 90,804 passengers on March 16th 2019 that is also a spring break time record so two days back to back MCO Orlando International Airport set records. So first was on the 11th, March 11th, 2023, with the parting passengers being recorded at 95,287. The very next day, (laughs) the second um, number was 92,947 on the 12th of March. That is a lot of people going through Orlando International Airport. Now, they're saying that for the about 46 days of spring break travel, because we're very early here in Florida, spring break happened um, this past week, uh, which would be the 11th, I think was the start of it. Hang on, let me look at the calendar. The week has gone by too quickly. Uh, The 13th, so you have the 11th through the 13th. That weekend would have been the start of spring break. Many people would have started traveling. Uh, All of Central Florida, I think for the most part, had spring break uh, this past week. But other places kind of um, stretch it out through, uh, through Easter for some places. And so for about 46 days of spring break, the Aviation Authority is estimating that a total of 7 million... 274,281 passengers will fly through Orlando International Airport alone. So that would be people coming in, going out. I was trying to see how many incoming passengers there were. I couldn't find that number specifically. Um, But this is departing passengers. So this is a lot of Florida people leaving for vacation. uh, Some some people are already here on vacation leaving. But a lot of this is um, people from Florida possibly leaving for spring break with 95,000 people. So I was trying to see if there is uh, an incoming record. And I don't see that specifically. Um, I was looking at the OIA um, press room here. Um, They're saying that they're expecting a 13% increase over the last year or nearly 1 million more travelers. Um, And they're showing numbers like um, they're expecting on Easter Sunday to have 163,289. But I'm not sure what that exactly is meaning if it's estimating incoming, outgoing Uh, I'm not sure exactly on that, but uh, March 25th seems to kind of be one of the peak days they're expecting travel with 172,929. So I'm expecting that that 
assuming that that is including incoming and outgoing passenger numbers is what they're expecting for that date which is a huge amount of people so if you're planning on coming to central florida if you still haven't perhaps booked your ticket it might be wise to shift to a different airport uh, if you can go into tampa if it might be a little bit cheaper a little bit less busy down there uh, if you wanted to fly into jacksonville or Sanford. Sanford International Airport is a pretty nice airport if you can get tickets there. Uh, also, Daytona International Airport gets you into Central Florida. You'd have to do a little driving to get to the attractions, but it might be a little bit cheaper, a little bit less hectic to fly in and out of if that's what you're planning um, to do. So come here to Central Florida for a spring break. But um, yeah, it's going to be exciting at the airport. So just as I say, pack your patience and be prepared for a long wait. If you're traveling out of the state or if you're traveling here to Florida for spring break, just be prepared that we are a hot destination, literally and figuratively, and um, that it will be a long line at the airport. So, all right, well, that's it for today. We'll come back with more interesting facts about Florida, things you should know if you're planning on traveling here or things if you live here in the next episode of the Ant on the Move podcast.